A big thank you to those of you who traveled. Some folks really traveled to get here. Uh, thanks to people in the room that I know, because I'm not even sure. Um, I had a phone call with my father last night and said, by the way, <laughs> there's this meeting going on tomorrow, because <laughs> he invited me to a Nats game. I'm like, I can't make it. You're welcome to come. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not even sure he realized that I had shared this story. So um, in addition to being, here we go, an opportunity for us to be in community, yeah. I feel like uh, this anthology in particular has been an opportunity for me to connect and reconnect to uh, people that I love the most, even though I've been out for like half of my life. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read you a serious story, <laughs> but it's um, one one of healing, right? So um, I appreciate your openness. It's entitled "Reembodied." I didn't begin listening to myself until my body almost failed. A year and a half ago, I had a sharp stomach pain that grew into a near ulcer. I managed the condition for a while as I sought medical opinions about its cause, but I disappointingly found little insight, and in fact, for most part, doctors didn't show much concern or urgency about a healthy 27-year-old developing a seemingly spontaneous chronic stomach disease. I got particularly sick when I started an antibiotic course for a bacterial infection that was related to, but not the source of stomach problems, and I had an allergic reaction that closed my throat and required an ER visit. But over the few days that I had differential symptoms that pointed toward another infection or a serious ovary issue or something else. But over time, I can say that I'm better now. And I couldn't be more grateful for the care that I had, uh, the deep, deeply knowledgeable healers that I had, and including the understanding boss, very reliable friends, some of you in this room, concerned parents, among other things, I improved, but I found myself within and inside another transformative moment. Amidst my body's pain, I accepted the source of my physical suffering was a manifestation of neglected parts of my emotional self. A friend on a similar health and healing journey turned me on to a beautiful, insightful book. And there I learned that irritable bowel issues are a classic constellation of symptoms stemming from repressed anger and other deep, persistent healing wounds. And this Western medicine perspective is not too different from my Eastern acupuncturist observations that if I release not only the present, but my past feelings, that my chronic stomach and lung conditions would dissipate. And in other words, my body was saying no to continuing to hold layers of micro stresses to which I had grown accustomed to over time. And stress was so integrated into my life that I took its presence for granted and my responsibility for it as well. This is in fact what I had to own during the most distress distressing week. While I had a chaotic night during high school with a close friend involving my parents fighting, alcohol, wandering alone late at night and almost being run over by a car that a parent was driving, the reality was the omnipresence of the stress in my life was undeniable my friend replied, that sounds traumatic. To which I said, oh, I guess it was. There's so many events in my early life like that, I had just described it as another crazy thing that actually did happen to me. And I can offer a power, powerful example that occurred during this period. I'd been having unusually depressed evening, finding myself restless in my sleep. I moved from bed to my futon in the dark. And I started to reflect on why my recent abrupt breakup with a girlfriend of three years not only felt so terrible, but it felt traumatic. What did these events trigger inside of me? And I was deeply in love for three years with a woman who was striving to understand and accept herself. And despite the enduring truth that she had never been in a relationship with another woman, and my troubled history of dating women like her, I leapt into a shattery unknown with her. And I didn't jump because I had learned the painful lesson from my reckless past, 
or because I was extraordinarily lonely. Rather, she, unlike so many others, chose to stay. And she chose to accept the abundance of love that I offered. Opportunities came for her to leave, to admit that no matter what her feelings were, and that she wanted an uncontroversial life, where nice Midwestern girls don't fall in love with mysterious black boys. But soon, curiosity grew into passion, and passion grew into love, and love grew into home. And we fought this world for two happy years. And sadly, though, I wasn't privy to her hidden struggle to accept herself for accepting my love. And we had to face a miserable reality that the force of our love can be so strong that it can actually cannibalize itself. And because in the end, it was through this love that she experienced so much happiness that she had to confront the possibility of her future. And to some people, queer love doesn't equate to 2.5 kids and a picket fence. And for this reason, our love was punished in ways that it often is, not by gay bashers in alleyways, by, by our inner hangman. We suffered difficult unraveling over thousands of miles apart after she graduated and we returned, she returned to her hometown. And it began with the midnight call that she almost gets another person that she met that evening. And then came the weeks of stomach churning phone calls about her relationship, its history, its love, against its impossibility, its uncertainty, and its longing. We even had two long breaks so we can date other people. And months later, just when she recommitted to the relationship, and just when I felt the ease smoothing over, the truth nearly broken back, she chose to leave. And she drifted off into the security of another relationship with a male friend from high school. And finally, she delivered her final blow of unfaithfulness and her unwillingness to stay. She chose, after three years, to reject the best part of love, my love that it could, I could offer, full of patience and compassion, and she didn't even think of it, or me, as deserving enough to treat it like hazardous waste, to discard it with care. And through that, I felt worthless, ashamed, embarrassed, and heartbroken. These were feelings that I felt before in my life. I was like, how long is this story? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Where was there? So during this meditation, during meditating on this, four months after perhaps my gravest disappointment, I curled up, curled up into a ball and transported myself into my eight-year-old self. And suddenly, I was experiencing feelings, the edge of fear that exposed vulnerability, of myself aware that the, my environment didn't feel stable, a degree of being unsafe, an enormous weight of responsibility to ignore these feelings, take care of my family, and meet outsiders' expectations of being an overachieving child. I spoke to this eight-year-old self. I spoke to her for the first time in 20 years. I assured her that these feelings were valid, but she would leave safe, she would be well and leave at the other end of this experience. I explained that she was cared for in some ways that she didn't even know, and that there was so, even though there's so much instability around her, remarkably, somehow she, she would meet her and everyone else's expectations, which was totally unnecessary, but also absolutely incredible. And it was significant for me to visit her that evening, and most of all, to truly root out my stomach pain, I'll have to visit her and many other versions of her, my younger and older selves, more regularly in order to meet the deep healing of this lifetime. And I'm reclaiming this time and space as my re-embodiment. I want to live in my stomach and my entire body from which I disassociated for almost a year. And cutting back from comfort eating was apparently part of it. And giving myself other kinds of self-love. But carefully revisiting, revisiting the emotional underlayers that were under the consistent micro-stress for so long and that were constant and unrequited. All that sacrifice and what it entails is where my healing lies. I'll take it on there.